so much to you and your committee for all of your efforts. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, now um, what everybody's been waiting for is the department head presentation given to us this evening by Nick Tortoise in the inspections department. Mr. Tortoise. Good evening. Good Mr. evening. Manager, town council chair and counselors. My name is Nick Tortoise. I'm the director of inspection services, better known to you as the building inspector. Yeah, you told me five, ten minutes. I could use about four hours, but we'll, uh, we'll start with um, <clears throat> did a little research in building codes. In 1929, we had the Southbridge Building Code. This is all the bylaws, all the zoning bylaws, and all the building codes, plumbing, wiring, gas, everything for the town of Southbridge was in this little book. In 1986, when I started the job, we came with this book. This was known as the fourth edition of the Massachusetts Building Code. It's a uniform code throughout the whole state. <clears throat> then things started to go a little screwy. 1997, we came out with the sixth edition. It's still the Massachusetts Building Code with 36 chapters. We went from 22 to 36. 19, the present, uh, this one you gotta give me a little break. <laughs> there you go. This is now the Massachusetts Building Code for the most part. So we've gone from a little tiny pamphlet to something that's 14 inches thick. And you don't enforce it and apply it like you used to. And you just can't turn around and say, well, all I want to build is a shed. Why do I have to go through all this? Well, it's public safety. That's all it is. So that's that. The department, the department has uh, uh, two full-time staff and five part-time. I got myself, I do uh, building codes, zoning, uh, signs, we do, uh, and I boss basically the whole department, manage the, uh, and I manage the budget. I've got a couple of notes here that I want to work off of. I review all the plans that come in for a building permit, whether it be a little simple sheet or something the size of, a, like we say in the trade, a bed sheet, like we had for the school. For the school, it was really intense and a lot of, uh, lot of sheets and a lot of blueprints. And I enforce all the handicap codes. It's called the AAB, Architectural Access Board. I got to take care of the ramps and the railings and the bathrooms and the, the crash bars. Uh, not the crash bars, sorry. The, uh, grab bars and bathrooms and it gets pretty intense that's the handicap code and that's there's no getting around it you have to have it I interact with the fire department whenever there's a problem and there's a safety concern they call me it could be during the day it could be in the middle of the night it could be on a weekend and the same with the police and uh, I work close with the uh, public works and we all get along real well. To tell you the truth, I would have a hard time doing my job without the cooperation of uh, fire, police, and public works. <clears throat> Judy is my administrative assistant. Her real title is senior clerk typist, but nobody types anymore. Today, you've got to be con computer savvy. You can't do this job. And uh, she does a heck of a job running the department. Uh, she does all the... Uh, bill paying, does the payroll, helps me out with the budget, answers and records all telephone calls, any inspections that come in, logs everything for all the other inspectors. So she handles all five of us real well and keeps us going uh, so that no one misses out. I got Bill Gibson as the wiring inspector and he's uh, real good at it. He's been at it for quite some time now and Bill spent a lot of time with uh, National Grid. So he's well known and he's well versed and the electrical trade enforces the National Electric Code with the Massachusetts Amendments. The, um, John Sahanic, uh, I was lucky to get him, um, does all the gas and plumbing. He enforces what's known as 248 CMR, the Massachusetts Fuel and Gas Code and plumbing. And uh, he keeps on top of everything, reviews all the applications before anything, anything is issued, 
and does all his, uh, his inspections, and he does them on time. There's no complaints nowhere from either one of my inspectors. There's someone else that works for me that some of you folks probably wouldn't know about it, uh, but Roland Barron, we all know him as Lefty. And Lef Lefty is the sealer of weights and measures. And he calibrates and checks and tests every scale that we have in town, scanner, gas pump, uh, fuel truck, uh, uh, bulk storage, any place where there's a storage of fuel or weighs anything, Lefty is there. And I'm proud to say Lefty's been with the town since 1957. That's a long time. And I went through the building code issues. Uh, <clears throat> some of the questions that are asked all the time is, when do I need a building permit? Well, I'm going to put it simple. I'm going to tell you when you don't. And everything else you do is really how it goes. And they <clears throat> accept that subject to other rules and regulations. In Southbridge, we have zoning regulations for accessory structures. This basically pertains to sheds. And uh, sheds or detached garages, anything that's detached from the dwelling. And uh, they'll say, why do I need a permit? Well, the building code says that un anything under 120 square feet, that's basically a 10 by 12. Building code doesn't care if the town doesn't require a permit for it, but the town of Southbridge does. We have zoning regulations for assessment structures. They have to meet certain setback requirements. So we have to here. The next one is a fence. And I get asked this all the time, where can I put a fence? A foot in, six inches in? Well, there's nothing on fence, folks, and there never has been. And there's no such thing as the good side facing your neighbor. Uh, there's nothing, absolutely nothing on fences unless they get higher than six feet high. So six feet is pretty tall. And once he gets over six feet, then the building code takes over, and it's going to get really expensive to put up a fence that's over six feet in height. Uh, Another one is the, a retaining wall that's four feet or less in height. A permit's not required. And uh, painting, papering, tiling, carpeting, cabinets, countertops, and similar finish work, no permit required. Swings and other playground equipment, no, playman, no permit required. And greenhouses that are covered with uh, a plastic film used for agricultural use, no permit required. Everything else, you need a permit. A wood stove, you need a permit. You're going to put insulation in your attic, you need a permit. You're going to change a window, you need a permit. You're going to fix a porch, you need a permit. It's all public safety. And the zoning part, the, um, the questions I get asked, for the most part, are how many unregistered vehicles are going to have in a lot? There's two. The section in the bylaws that only allows you to have two unregistered vehicles. Um, unless they are under, there's a special chapter, I think it's chapter 90 of Mass General Laws that defines an antique. Now, a vehicle that's 25 years old is basically an antique. And if it's piled in the backyard with full of trash and hoods up in the air, I consider it junk, so you're going to move it. But other than that, the, uh, uh, you can have only two vehicles. And if you have a boat with a trailer on it, with a, with a trailer or a camper, that's considered a vehicle. So it's not just cars. Any vehicle that can be registered is considered, can only have two. Another one, as I mentioned, was the fences. And one of the biggest ones that I have a problem with is the agricultural part, with uh, 502.64, is the raising of fowl, uh, the chickens. And uh, we've all had a little experiences with those. And uh, uh, fowl, goats, sheep, pigs, uh, horses, uh, cows, fur-bearing animals, is only allowed if you have a parcel that's five acres or more. Anything less than that, can't have them. You know, I get, sometimes they look at me a little funny, well, you know, the, the kids like them, they're pets and so forth, but you're not supposed to have them. The, um, another one is um, yard sale signs. We, I, myself, have not been active in enforcing the bylaw and yard sale signs, but they're really not allowed. Nowhere except where you're having the yard sale. So wherever that takes place, there's a yard sale sign that goes in front of the house, and that's where it stays, and nowhere else. There's not supposed to be any, any uh, signs at all taped to telephone poles. 
telephone poles are owned by Verizon. They're on public property, so they're really under the jurisdiction of the town manager because they are on public property and become uh, public. And it, that's through the manager, and anything that's not public, private property, goes through me. But actually, yard sale signs are not allowed at all. Then we have uh, other signs, such as campaign signs, real estate signs, uh, philanthropic uh, church type events and things. The sign is allowed without a permit for a period of 30 days. Well, so those aren't too bad. We do have some leeway and we're working on, on revising the bylaw and uh, hopefully that'll clear up a little, uh, a little better some of the stuff that's in there that's kind of old you know, and, and needs to be brought up to date. We have new techniques on uh, uh, on lighting with LEDs and uh, you know and so forth that uh, uh, neons and things that we didn't have in the past. So we need to kind of bring things up to date. And uh, and, and then again, building uh, the building code is the biggest part of it. Um, these these documents uh, uh, they're uh, they're very intense, and I've had to get uh, study aids after 26 years in order for myself to interpret the code. And these are energy codes. This all does on the green leads, and we have uh, this particular one uh, works on the um, uh, existing buildings, the renovations and uh, repair and a change of use of existing buildings. Uh, I, you've heard, some of you have heard me say the chapter 34 review uh, that you gotta do, and it's basically and this is a national code. This isn't something that's just unique to Massachusetts. This is all over the country. And this is also um, a uh, energy code for all over the country. And built, you build a house or a building according to these specs in here, you are gonna use very little fuel uh, or energy to uh, heat and cool that building. You know, this, it's really, really nice. You know, so other than that, I'll, uh, I'll keep it short and I'll entertain any questions if anybody's got some. Councilor Marcucci? I'm just full of it tonight, I guess Madam you are Chair. full of it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Through you to Mr. Tortoise. Certainly. Nick, fencing in between homes, like you said. A little louder. Can you, I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. The fencing. Fencing? Home fencing. Yeah. It was my understanding that you always had to be four feet or, you know, two feet from your abutter. So if I were to construct a fence, you go to your property line? Is that, it doesn't matter. I have no rules. Well, not I, the town does not have any rules regarding the fences, nothing. The only suggestion I make to people when they ask me the question is, don't put it on somebody else's land. But there's no reason why you can't go right up to the property line. If you really get technical with the word fence, it's a structure, and the definition of a structure is a group of materials assembled in a fixed location. And if you use that term, a structure has to meet setback requirements. So now that fence has to be 30 feet front, 10 foot side, and 30 foot rear in your area. So the fence will be up against your house. You know, it just doesn't make sense. But we, don't have, we do not have anything at all on fencing. And all the way back to that 1929 bylaw, there's nothing on fencing. I never knew that. It's always my I, understanding. I do think, just in, in my experience, that it's not necessarily a building code issue, but it, it is a legal issue. That if you think of it, if you have a stockade fence that you need to paint and you put it on the line and you're in your neighbor's yard painting the fence, technically that's trespassing. So I think one of the advice that you generally get is, you know, to have it set back about a foot. So theoretically, you're painting the fence from and your, your own property. property and not someone else's. But I, I believe that's more, in my experience, it's been legal issue than more so than a, a building code issue. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Councilor Clements. Thank you. In regard to fencing, you say there are, there are no rules on that. I can see property lines, but you have fencing rules in regard to swimming pools. Yes, that's different. Yeah. And could you explain that to make sure that people uh, the, are really clear uh, about that? Those are in the swimming pool regulations, and they're all, I, I, well, it used to be Chapter 4, and now it's different in another place in the building code. It does, you have to have a security fence around that pool. 
That's, yeah. But isn't it five feet? And I mean, aren't there some rules uh, to it? The, uh, yes. Uh, in South the private pool, it was five feet. Uh, the, the state regulations are for private, it's five, four feet. For semi private, it's five feet. And for um, uh, public, it's uh, six feet. But in Southbridge, our bylaws is five feet. Okay, I was going to say, because you just said yeah. semi private, and yet I was told the five footer years and years ago. So well, that would be a, like a condo place where there's a, a pool for the condo complex. Right. They got to have a fence of five feet tall. Right, but in Southbridge, our own bylaws. Our rules, five our feet. zoning bylaws are five feet. Okay. Yeah. And that's what you tell people when they're putting And them that's in. what I make them do. Right. You know, well, I have to. Yeah. Right, okay, I'm just making sure. I'm okay. Great. I know that comes up a lot for people that I talk to. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything for Mr. Tortoise? I want to thank you very much. Okay. Um, I, I, now that's the second time this evening coming from that, the podium that I've, I've heard about the cooperation of the different departments, and it's, it makes me feel very good to hear that. That's what we hope for, that you all work as a team, and that's what we seem to aspire to, and I guess you're, you're right there. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Thanks. Okay, moving on to agenda item number eight is Citizens Forum. Do I have any citizens wishing to come forward this evening?